So when discussing aliens or UFOs, I mean, a lot of the descriptions or explanations can just be explained away using natural phenomena or things like a hoax. And actually, it turns out that roughly 90% of UFO sightings are explained by natural or man-made phenomena. But that means what about the other 10%? Well, I mean, those are unknown. Now, just because it's unknown doesn't necessarily mean it's alien. In fact, if you knew it was alien, then I suppose it wouldn't be a UFO because it wouldn't be unidentified, would it? Now, I mean, people usually use photos or video, which are easily faked, or they use eyewitness accounts, which are not really that reliable. What I think is a really interesting fact is that the number of UFO sightings among astronomers. I mean, think, these are people whose job it is to look straight up at the sky. I mean, shouldn't they be seeing lots more UFOs? But in fact, no, they don't see any extra UFO sightings from astronomers. In fact, there's less of them. Why is that? That's because they know lots about the sky, so they can probably explain what it is. So the main problem with UFOs being explained as aliens is that there is a lack of evidence that they are actually aliens. Now, that's not to say that they don't exist. I wish. I think that would be awesome. But there's a real lack of evidence, and I think that is the main problem with people saying that UFO settings are aliens. And why do they have to be aliens? Why not? It's just something we don't understand yet. That's the key thing in science, right? We often see things we don't understand. We don't have to explain it by something ridiculous. We can just say, well, it's something we don't understand. Maybe we'll figure it out later. Now, there have been lots of UFO claims and stories. I mean, they're in the news all the time. You can look it up. Just do a search for UFO, and you'll find hundreds of websites all about this and how there's always a big conspiracy. Now, there may be some truth to some of these stories. It's hard to separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. So one of the most famous ones, I talked about this before, is in Roswell, New Mexico. So here's, here's a bit about the story here. I mean, in, in a place called Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947, uh, there was a farmer that just found some crash remnants in a field. Okay, so imagine you're some farmer, do 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 you're going out looking at your field, and all of a sudden, oh, you find some, some bits of something. So something did crash, it seems, in this farmer's field. That doesn't seem to be up for any debate. Something did crash there. So nearby military at Roswell Army Airfield, they took the debris or the parts, and, and someone made the mistake of saying or explaining that it was the remains of some sort of, and this is the thing, they called it a flying disc. And I think that was the mistake that somebody said there. I think it's because they didn't quite know the shape of it, so they just called it a flying disc. And people freaked right out. Then they said it was a saucer. And oh my god, it must be an alien, right? As soon as there's a disc flying around, you know, it must have been some sort of alien. But why is it these aliens are so bad at flying? Why is it that they crashed onto Earth, first of all? is what I'd like to know. In any case, the next day, though, the Air Force, they held a press conference saying that the flying disc was actually not a flying disc, that it was just a crashed weather balloon. Now, you imagine, now, that was in 1947 that they said all this, okay? Now, later on, though, in 1978, so more than 30 years later, Someone writes a story and says, you know what, there was a, this is a UFO investigator, and he said that, well, it actually was an alien craft, and that it actually had aliens on board. And they had interviews of people, and some people said that that was the case, other people said it wasn't the case. But keep in mind, these are interviews based on people's recollection, uh, recollections 30 years later. It was no surprise that the sources weren't very reliable. Now, the question might be, what was it really? I mean, it's likely not actually a weather balloon. Uh, that's because they didn't actually quite look exactly like this. So some experts have actually looked into it and said it's probably not a weather balloon. But what could it have been? Well, it looks like it was actually a military balloon. It turns out if you look at the parts and look at the plans for these special balloons that the military was using at the time, uh, they were sending up balloons in order to try to detect uh, Say signs of Soviet nuclear blasts. Remember, that was done uh, at the beginning of the Cold War, and this is 1947, so they're worried about Russians uh, you know, detonating nuclear explosions. Rightly so, because the Russians were doing it. Um, and actually, this project was called Project Mogul. So there is, there is something that was flying there. It was likely a military balloon, but in any case, 
um, I mean, saying that it was aliens and later on you can actually, I mean, you can look it up yourself. You can see all these videos that look like they were faked actually of, you know, the autopsy of the aliens. Because if you look at the real footage of, um, you know, of, of that time, the footage is actually much grainier and much different quality than the alien actually is. So it looks like it was added and, and edited recently. But in any case, I think that a lot of that is just to make a good story. Then again, I wasn't there. I'm not sure, right? There might have actually been aliens, but it doesn't seem likely because how come we don't have evidence of it? And some people say, oh, the military covered it up. Well, they likely covered up that it was a military balloon, sure, because they didn't want people knowing that. But in any case, this stuff is very much in the news. I'll let you make your own decisions, but I do want you to think about evidence and if there's a lack of it, because that is something important. Another famous place, and actually this is very close to Roswell, this is an area called Area 51. You can do searches of that as well. It's sometimes known as Groom Lake, it has all sorts of other names. But you can actually look it up on Google, or on Google Maps even. If you just do a Google Maps search for Area 51, you'll see that there really is a base uh, that's nicknamed Area 51. What I like is that, you know, there's this restaurant that's called, uh, well, the little Ale Lee Inn. So it's the Ale Lee Inn. Ha, 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 ha. So, yes, there is a real place called Area 51. It is where the military tests, uh, this is the American military, I mean, uh, they test experimental aircraft. Now, people claim that aliens and the saucer from uh, Roswell is there. But I mean, I would argue that it's probably just tight security because they don't want people knowing what kind of planes they're flying there. So then again, I mean, that is very much in the news, this Area 51. Another famous thing in the news with aliens is crop circles. So this is the idea that strange patterns in the fields, they show up overnight. And of course, a lot of people's explanations, aha, aliens, it must be an alien craft coming in and doing this. Well, first of all, why are they only coming in at night and doing this? And why are they making all these big patterns? Why isn't it sort of burnt in? There's a lot of questions we could ask about this. Um, but I mean, they, a lot of these crop circles have actually been proven to be pranks. People say that they're, they're too complex to be human-made, you know, to be man-made. But over the years, I mean, what's interesting is that these different crop circles that have, ex that have shown up, they've actually increased in complexity. And I think that's because, the, you know, the human pranksters, they've gotten better at it. But, I mean, why would the aliens who could fly here, you know, from somewhere, you know, maybe millions of light years away, why, could, why is it that they're all of a sudden making nicer crop circles from year to year? That doesn't really seem to make sense to me, but... Oh, well, there you go. So there are crop circles. They do show up really beautiful symbols. I mean, if someone's just doing this as a hoax, at least it looks really pretty. So someone's making something really nice in these fields. Although if you're the farmer, maybe you're not very happy because maybe you're trying to use this field to actually get some crops. But oh, well. We also have uh, something in the news often called the Nazca Lines, and those are in Peru. My wife and I were in Peru, and there was lots of tours you could take and actually go and see these. Now, these are a little bit, I think they're really cool, actually. So these are huge markings in the desert. And some people said, oh, these are landing strips uh, or, you know, markers for the aliens. Some pe um, there's even one of these big, so these are big, big sort of things that are in the ground. So they could be um, things that have actually been dug into the ground, you know, to make a, a cool pattern in the desert. So this one, some people said, oh, that's a landing strip. And then you have all these really cool symbols like a monkey. And there's one that some people called an astronaut. But I mean, these are huge, huge uh, displays here. I think they're really beautiful considering how old they are. Um, but some people have said, oh, well, those are made for aliens. But no, I mean, it just looks like they're just large drawings made by the, Aska, the Nazca Indians. I mean, there's no special technology needed. You just have to make some lines and away you go. I mean, the fact that they're huge, uh, I mean, might be just that their god could see them. I mean, there's been a lot of rational explanations for this. So you don't necessarily have to jump right away to aliens as the explanation. It could be a lot of other things. Now, finally, alien abductions. Are there actually people being abducted by aliens I'm not sure. I mean, unless it happens to me, I think it's really hard to sort of stomach this or sort of buy this. Because why are they coming in? Why are they doing experiments on only some people? Why is it they're mostly Americans? I mean, there's a huge amount of Americans who are the ones, you know, claiming to be abducted by aliens, which I think is a little bit odd. 
So with these abductions, for example, and I really like this quote by Carl Sagan. He said, extraordinary claims like this, for example, they require extraordinary evidence. And I think, again, that is the main thing that's lacking with these alien visits or UFOs actually being, you know, other aliens that are actually coming in and visiting us. The problem is, is there's a lack of evidence. That's the main thing I want to show you. Like I said, it may be the case that they actually are visiting. I wish they were. I think that'd be so interesting. I'd love to meet some aliens. But as of now, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny.